Hi everyone, my name is uh, Josef Vitovec and I work in uh, Narodní filmový ar archive uh, in Prague, which is like a Czech uh, national film archive. And I work there as a software like developer, engineer, and like, you know, like the coding stuff. And I'm gonna have like a short presentation uh, on ingesting preservation and access of digital archival uh, packages using uh, Archivematica and Atom. Uh, to put into context uh, why I have a presentation on this subject, uh, in 2020, uh, Národní filmový archiv in Prague started a three-year-long project called uh, Audiovisual Work Outside the Context of Cinema, Documentation, Archiving and Access that aims to develop a long-term sustainable strategy for the preservation and access to the art of the moving image. Uh, the project uh, is implemented on the basis of like multidisciplinary cooperation of like the historical team and digital archiving specialists. And the prerequisite uh, for the project is the long-term cooperation uh, of the National Film Archive with visual arts uh, collecting institutions and the implementation uh, of the developed methods and procedures into their collection exhibition activities. Uh, also, it works with the underlying uh, like premise of digitizing and digitally preserving works originally created in a wide range of analog and digital professional and amateur image formats that are like difficult to rep uh, reproduce like technically today. Uh, yeah, so like the whole process uh, that has been like created within, within this project is uh, much more complex than what I'm going to present today, as, as you heard, but I will focus mostly on the archiving and present presentation part of the whole chain. Since the project uh, was created in, uh, independently of uh, existing preservation workflows uh, in our archive, uh, we had a chance to build uh, something from scratch. So we, we took this advantage and did like a research uh, on the available like solutions and tools and eventually uh, decided on Archimatica and Atom the main reasons uh, were like obviously that both are like free open source uh, tools and also implement widely used uh, international standards. So even in case uh, we will decide like in, in the future to use like a different system, we still can easily migrate our, our data to, to the new system. So uh, let's start uh, with Archivematica first. Uh, for those of you who are not like familiar with it, uh, it's like an integrated suite of open source software tools that allows users to process uh, digital objects from ingest to access in compliance with the ISO OAIS uh, functional model, which is uh, depicted uh, on the picture. Uh, it's based on the so-called like a microservice architecture and like you can imagine like uh, those uh, microservices as uh, granular like, system tasks uh, which operate on an entity that is equivalent to uh, OAIS information package. It can be basically like anything from like Python script like to free like open source external tools like media info for example. And by chaining uh, these microservices, you can create like your own custom workflow. Uh, tasks slash microservices are like predefined in Archivematica, but you can write uh, your own scripts too. Uh, but we, we didn't have to uh, actually to customize it much because uh, Archivematica already uh, did everything uh, we needed. So, oh. It's a bit, yeah, sorry for that. Uh, so basically, uh, the life cycle of uh, archival package in Archivematica is divided into three, three functional parts, which the data passes through. 
The first one is transfer, then ingest, and then archival storage. Uh, in Archimatica transfer uh, is a process of moving any set, basically like anything, uh, to anything like digital to, to uh, Archimatica and turning the data into uh, submission information package, SIP, according to the rules defined in the system configuration. Uh, Archimatica is uh, like a format agnostic, so meaning that it can accept, accept like uh, anything, as I already said, and any file that you, you, you pass to the system, basically. Uh, a single transfer can be like homogeneous or it can be a mix of many like different formats and how quickly Archimatica can process a transfer uh, that depends uh, on two things, the size of the transfer, both the individual objects and the transfer as a whole and also the transfer like complexity and by complexity for example, you can imagine like uh, you have uh, something like zipped or you know like if it's zipped it's m much more like uh, complex for, for Archimatica to process it. Uh, and at the bottom right you can see like the detail of uh, one microservice responsible for identifying file formats. This one, uh, particularly using secret uh, file format ident identification tool. And on the left, uh, you know, it's a bit hidden, but uh, there is like the structure we use for our SIP. Uh, I would a uh, bit like contemplate on it. There are like three main uh, directories. Uh, the first one is like DOC or like DOC, it stands for like documentation and contains uh, documents such as like acquisition report, uh, conservation report in PDF formats as well as generated media info file in HTML format. And yeah, as you can see our package also includes the media info itself that could be as well like generated by Archimatica. However, since our digital operators uh, have to generate the media info anyway, we decided to uh, include it in the package. Mm, PRE, uh, uh, that stands for like preview and contains basically in our case both like video preview and sets of stills. And the last one is uh, BID, like BIP, and uh, they are like where masters are located. Yeah, well, I would like to move to the next stage, uh, which is called like ingest. And ingest like, uh, is a phase of which SIP is uh, created during transfer are run through uh, several microservices, so also as, as it was on the previous stage. Uh, the one I would like to mention, and uh, which is also de depicted on the, on the picture like below, uh, is normalization, which means you can decide like uh, if the SIP is supposed to be like normalized for, uh, for preservation that creates uh, preservation copies only, so no access copies are created and no DIP will be generated or the SIP can be normalized for access to that that IP will contain originals only and no preservation copies will be generated. Or as you can see on the picture they can be like, uh, you know, you can do both. The third one is like uh, archival storage. Uh, so yeah, after like uh, your successful like ingest uh, of of AIP, uh, the AIP should appear on on the storage. On the left, you can see how the AIP uh, look in Archimatica, and two upper pictures uh, on the right shows the representation on a file system. Uh, the AIP itself uh, is packed into like a packet packaging format. Uh, the manifest files are a list of calculated checksums for each file and the rest is inside the data directory where you can also find a generated uh, match file. The data structure shown uh, in the transfer slide uh, are then loc located in the objects folder. Mm, and in, in order to fully preserve our data we must put them on LTOs, right? So Unfortunately, Archimatica, or as far as I know, uh, does not do this task for us. So we had to create a Python script, which is like responsible 
for uh, for that and and communicate with our tape library. Basically, like the script uh, checks like Arithmetica Storage Service API every day and go through uh, all packages. And if a package does not exist on LTO, it just saves it there. Uh, yeah, at the very bottom, there is like just like an example of like one function how we communicate with. Archivematica Storage Service API. Mm, yeah, let's move to Atom, which is like an abbreviation for access to memory. That's a web-based open source application uh, for standards-based uh, archival description and access. And as Archivematica, uh, it's developed also by uh, Artifactual, so it's not a surprise that these uh, like two systems can work together and receiving uh, the IP is quite uh, straightforward uh, as long as both systems are like configured uh, correctly. However, it's uh, like difficult to automatically like uh, achieve the same structure as in, uh, in, in a transfer or it, it is like that uh, what we were struggling with uh, because like all files are moved uh, to the item level and the remaining levels represented by folders in SIP are missing. So it's necessary to create those missing levels manually every time new DIP is transferred. But that's probably the only flaw when it comes to integration between these two. And in order like to satisfy our needs, uh, we also made a few adjustments to Atom. Like uh, we started with just like the, you know, UI uh, some some basic like uh, customizations. Also, uh, we imported our own, uh, you know, the um, dictionaries. And the the biggest uh, modification is probably like generation of identifiers. Uh, this can be provided by Atom as well, but without the ability to reference the works from external systems. So for that purpose, uh, we modify the source code a bit to be able to connect to GraphQL API of our like identification system to to enable like generating uh, identifiers. Mm, this system then, I mean the, the identification uh, then stores the, the Atom URL of the work in addition to the generated identifier, which can then be like further referenced. Uh, one example of how we use uh, this external like referencing uh, of like these atom like identifiers is like uh, one of the outputs of, of the project is uh, like a book that uses like a printed QR codes QR codes sorry so a reader is thus able as they read uh, to access like previews uh, of the works mentioned in a book. Yeah, that's probably it. Uh, I think at the end I would like to encourage everyone uh, to try both like Archimatica and Atom if the use case allows you to do so. Even though we have uh, run into troubles a few times, it's very well like documented and uh, in case of an issue we were unable to resolve, there is like, still like possibility to ask on the user forum managed by, uh, directly by the Artifactual team. So, I mean, thanks like to the open source community, like you are doing like great things. And yeah, here are like, here is like the link actually, like the, the one below. So our like uh, running Atom instance with all the data I was talking about. Uh, even though descriptions are in Czech language, Atom interface uh, is like still in English. So you still can watch like lots of like videos and you know, dig, dig deeper. So, yeah. So Sorry. if you have like some, some questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, we only have one minute, but we could throw a question in if any has one. We have one question from online audience. Ervin is joining us online today. Hi, Ervin. Um, he asks, how much time did you invest in fine tuning the system to your needs? Like you mean like tuning the system to our needs? Like, yes. Oh. Actually, I would say like not that much. I mean, we maybe like expected uh, to spend much more time, 
but you know we we uh, still like at the like beginning we have like uh, 120 like packages so maybe like in the future we will think about it like more and more and do like some some our like own scripts or you know some customizations or something Thank you, that's yeah. really great. I'm sorry we're out of time now. If there's any yeah. more questions, please do engage with Joseph yeah, yeah. in the 